Welcome everybody. Today I'm going to be showing you a technique I like to use to control the sustain and resonance of my drums. Now I, I use this currently in the studio, but I actually started using this live to control how long my uh, outside kick mic sustained on stage. Uh, normally I'll use it on toms and kick, but I also like to use it on things like djembe and cajon, and I'll be showing you that in a little bit. Really you could use it on anything that has a long resonance that you want to control. Um, but I already have the session pulled up, so let's get right into it. All right, I have this mid-tom. It's soloed currently. Let me bypass a couple of these effects here, the compression and gate, and uh, let's go ahead and take a listen. Yeah, so it's a good sounding tom. Uh, the first thing you'll probably notice is that it's a sample, right, because you don't hear a bunch of bleed from the other instruments. And uh, I actually had the drummer, while we were tracking this song, sample all his drums. I like to do that anytime we're in a really good space with really good mics on my drums. Um, <clears throat> and we actually tracked this in Warm Studios. Phenomenal live room. I actually made a tutor tutorial about how to mic drums in that room. I'll leave a link to that in the description here. Um, so you'll, you'll hear that it sustains for quite a while. It goes on a good long time and actually will we'll keep going into the next drum hit. And that's before I turn on the C6 compressor. So let's go ahead and turn that on and listen to what it sounds like with the compression. Yeah, so obviously the compressor is going to make that sustain last a little longer. And I, I really like the C6 and what it does to toms. I actually have another tutorial about how to use multiband compression on toms. And if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description for that video as well. So, okay, <clears throat> what do I do to control that sustain? Well, you could do something like this, and I've seen a lot of people do it. Right, you'll do a little quick edit there. Except that is completely the wrong way. There we go. <clears throat> so I've seen people do stuff like that on every Tom hit, right? In fact, I'm going to confess that when I first got started, I used to do that as well. Go through and, <clears throat> and actually do a fade on every Tom just to try and make it sound as natural as possible and get out as much bleed as possible. But that's crazy. That takes way too long. Uh, I really don't like doing that and I haven't done it in years because now I use this amazing tool called a gate. That's right. It's just a gate. We all know how to use a gate. However, typically a gate is used to, um, to mute you know, between the hits to get out the bleed, right? So you don't want to hear that snare in your tom mic or the hi-hat in your tom mic, things like that. That's typically what a gate is used for. However, this is a sample, right? So I don't have to deal with any of that. So I use it just to give me a nice uniform tail on each of my toms. Um, so because I'm not trying to cut anything out, let's go ahead and take a look. <clears throat> That's why I have my attack as fast as possible, right? I do not want to miss any of the transients in my tom. That's why I have my hold as fast as possible and why I have look ahead on, right? You always want to have look ahead on. It literally looks ahead of what you're hearing so they can react even faster to, you know, incoming transients. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Basically what we want to do is get this slope right here to sound as natural as possible because once it goes below the threshold it's going to reduce the volume along this slope here so let me go ahead and i've already got the gate in let's uh let's listen to what it sounds like with that gate Yeah, so it still resonates for a while, but it just doesn't keep ringing and ringing, and it still sounds natural with how long it goes on. 
Right, you can even look at the gain reduction meter and you can see how it trails off. Right, and how quickly it does that is controlled by your release time. Right, so I have it on two seconds. If you're doing something really heavy with a super dense mix, uh, like metal or something like that, you can have this even faster. Uh, this particular song is a praise and worship song, so the toms aren't as much about attack. It's more about kind of the, the body of the tom, and you want to hear it um, go on for a while, especially in this part because this is a more ambient part of the song. So that's why I have release the release set to two seconds. Okay, and then... I have the range set, right now it's at about 12. Um, this actually controls how much it reduces the volume once <clears throat> the gate starts to close. So because it's not closing all the way and muting it, that's actually what makes it an expander instead of a gate. Um, but you can actually hear when that gate is, is reducing the volume that you can still hear a little bit of that resonance, and that's because I don't have this, uh, this range cranked way down. So it's only reducing the volume by, uh, at that time it was about 12, I like to leave it on, oh, not that way, I like to leave it on about 17 or so. Let's hear how that sounds. Right, sounds really natural. Um, and then the ratio, that's gonna control this curve here. Yeah, I find that the lower ratios actually sound way more natural. So a nice 1.6 to one, it's kind of a gentle knee. All right, and then the release time, like I said, let's. Let's try that a little shorter. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, that sounds really unnatural. It's just kind of going away super fast. I mean, you could probably even get away with that 1.4 in the mix. Uh, it, it is going away a little bit, a little bit fast. Doesn't sound super natural, but. Uh, I mean, in a, a big mix, again, you're probably not going to notice that. Again, I like two, two seconds that has a, a nice natural sustain to it. So, um, And with the threshold, you just kind of want to set that to where <clears throat> it's after the initial hit. Not super short, like after the, the transient, but maybe a, a quarter second to a half second after that. So let's, let's watch when it goes uh, below the threshold. Yeah, so definitely less than a second, but not super fast. I don't want it to start reducing until the real beef of that hit kind of starts to go away. So let's let's listen to it in the mix, hear how that sounds. Yeah, so that, that sounds pretty good. I uh, hope that makes sense to you. Let's actually go into a different session and listen to it on a cajon. So I have my next session pulled up. This is a, a live stream recording from the band The Follow Through, which I play guitar for. Uh, we do a once a month, well-produced live stream uh, to both Rumble and YouTube. And it's a acoustic kind of stripped down session. So it's got a cajon. Uh, electric, I mean acoustic guitar rather, and then vocals, and that's basically it. So super simple setup, but uh, really need to use that uh, that gate trick that I just showed you on the low end for the cajon. Um, otherwise, it just kind of rumbles the whole time. Uh, so what I like to do, even though I only have one mic on it, I'm just using a D112 on the front. It's uh, it's bass ported on the front, so I have it right there. Um, I'll duplicate the track and then I will do a crossover, so a, a, high, a high pass on one and a low pass on the other. 
That way I can treat them differently, almost like a kick and a snare. And ultimately with a cajon, that's kind of what I'm trying to do is make it sound like a kick and a snare. So let's, let's listen to it real quick, hear how it sounds. Yeah, so if you if you notice the low end for for the cajon, it just kind of it keeps on rumbling, right? And it takes up a lot of space because again, I am trying to exaggerate that bottom end, and so I don't want that to keep going um, the whole time he's playing. So again, that's where this trick is going to come in. And this, unlike the the first one, obviously is not a sample. This is a live uh, recording, so. I'm gonna put in this gate real quick. Let's hear what that sounds like. Yeah, with, with the gate in there, it's just so much tighter. It keeps that thing from, from rumbling the whole time. And um, yeah, just really uh, kind of makes it sound more like a kick, which is, again, what I'm going for. So let's just take a look. I actually have the uh, attack time a little slower on this, and that's simply because I noticed that when I turned it all the way down, uh, as fast as it could go, that it was clicking and popping. Uh, so I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe a buffer issue. If you guys know, let me know. Um, but I found one millisecond was fine. You know, it's, it's still only one millisecond, so you're not going to be able to tell the difference. Again, hold is all the way down. Uh, look, uh, look ahead is always going to be on. Always, guys, leave look ahead on. Um, this time I do have my range set a little bit lower because I want, <clears throat> it doesn't necessarily need to sound natural like the tom. That tom I wanted to ring out a little bit, but the low end of the cajon I want to be very tight and very short. So that's why I'm running with the range longer or, or lower than it is. Same with the ratio and the release time. I want it to, to really keep that thing from ringing out. So um, I'm going to let it play and I'm going to mess with a few of these parameters just so you guys can hear what it sounds like and hear the difference. So I actually didn't mind it with the um, with the range turned down more. Uh, of course, I have this in solo, guys. Never mix in solo. Uh, but yeah, I didn't mind it actually being a little snappier with the, the range down lower. So it was was actually reducing that volume further faster. Uh, let's listen to it in the mix because that's going to be the real judge, right?
So uh, when I brought that range down, uh, it actually started to sound a little bit fake to me. So I think that 40 dB still sounds good. It sounds like he's actually playing on a cajon. Maybe I'll do a video for how to mix cajon, how to mic cajon. Uh, if that's something you guys are interested in, let me know. So today was a quick video, like I said, just kind of showing you this, this trick that I like to use on my drums. If you guys have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below in the description. And let me know what you guys think. Leave a thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see you next time.